Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Square Wave 2. In my very last video I promised that my next video would be about winding coils. Winding coils for your crystal radio. Especially winding coils with taps. The loop type tap. Now this can be difficult and tricky unless you have the technique down which I'm going to show you in a minute. But first I'd like to make a comment on the title of my last video which was Crystal Radio Free Energy Source? Question mark. Well, I was being facetious. Everyone knows that crystal radios have absolutely nothing to do with free energy. And in fact, there is no such thing as free energy. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get on with a coil winding lesson. In winding a coil by hand, it's very important to keep a constant tension on the magnet wire as you wind. Of course, you're not stretching the wire, but you want all the turns to be really snug and close together. Now, the way I used to accomplish this is kind of funny. I would go out in the backyard and hook my magnet wire up to a fence post, walk across the backyard, unreeling about 75 feet of wire, cut the wire and attach it to my forearm, and then I would start winding. Wind, 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 and a step, wind, wind, step, wind, step, wind, step, and about an hour later I would arrive back at the fence post, I would cut my line free and secure it to my forearm. Now this worked okay for me, except what about if it's raining outside, or snowing, or what if it's 110 degrees outside? How are you going to keep constant tension as you wind your coil? Well, I found the answer in a YouTube video posted by Microwave One. Microwave One has many wonderful videos concerning radio subjects. Anyhow, in one of his videos he showed how he runs his wire through the pages of a book as he is winding the coil. And this maintains a constant tension. Now I tried it and it works absolutely beautifully. And I'm going to show you how to set it up in just a minute. The first thing you're going to have to do is design some type of a spindle to hold your spool of magnet wire. I've done that with my little vise, a piece of broomstick, a piece of scrap wood. Now make sure that the spool turns freely. That is very important. Over here I've got my stack of books set up to approximate the height of my spindle. Now your magnet wire is going to run through the pages of the top book like this. Now this creates a certain amount of tension on the wire as you wind, but it's fully adjustable. If you want more tension, add more weight until it feels just right. Then you are going to have to have a vise attached to your workbench, or a vise clamped to the kitchen table, if the wife isn't home that is. And then you have to select what I would call a loop tool. This is what makes the taps, a loop tool. The best loop tool is a Phillips screwdriver. Don't use a blade screwdriver because they tend to flare out at the end. But a Phillips screwdriver is just right. And keep in mind the diameter of your loops is going to be the same as the diameter of your screwdriver. So select it carefully. So you take your screwdriver or your loop tool and clamp it firmly into your vise like this. And then you're almost ready to go. Here's what your final setup should look like. Just make sure that the tip of your loop tool, the center of your books, and your spindle are more or less in a straight line. Now, of course, before you can start winding your coil, you will need something to put it on, some kind of a form. And please, for heaven's sakes, do not use a toilet paper tube. They are way too flimsy. What I use is mailing tubes. They come in different diameters. They're very, very sturdy and very inexpensive. Begin by drilling two teeny holes near the end of the coil. Take the wire from your spool and feed it through one hole and out the other hole. Pull it through with about six inches of excess, which will be used later to connect to your circuit. Just tuck the excess inside the tube for now and you're ready to start winding. It's a very good idea to have a couple strips of electrical tape cut and ready. This way you can tape off your windings if for any reason you are interrupted. 
It's also a very good idea to be seated while winding this coil because the wire has to be under the loop tool at all times. Okay, let's begin winding and counting our turns. Turn one. Turn two. Now when you get to the turn that your instructions call for a tap, make sure your form is under the loop tool, like this. Grab just enough wire to make a loop over the loop tool. Straighten out your line. Take up any slack. Now the next thing I'm going to do is slip the loop off the loop tool. But notice my left thumb is holding the previous windings tight. I don't want to lose them. And here's my loop. The next step is to grab the loop firmly between thumb and forefinger. Give it one half turn clockwise. One half turn is all you need. Then take your regular slip joint pliers and squeeze the twist as tightly as possible to make it flat. Then you simply continue winding and counting your turns. Let's see that again. Now when you get to the turn that your instructions call for a tap, make sure your form is under the loop tool, like this. Grab just enough wire to make a loop over the loop tool. Straighten out your line. Take up any slack. Now the next thing I'm going to do is slip the loop off the loop tool. But notice my left thumb is holding the previous windings tight. I don't want to lose them. And here's my loop. The next step is to grab the loop firmly between thumb and forefinger. Give it one half turn clockwise. One half turn is all you need. Then take your regular slip joint pliers and squeeze the twist as tightly as possible to make it flat. Then you simply continue winding and counting your turns. When you finish making your last turn, Secure the coil with a piece of electrical tape. Then take some glue and place spots of glue that cover the last couple turns and the coil form. When the glue is completely dry, remove the electrical tape and drill the same two holes you did to begin the coil. Feed the wire in one hole and out the other. Now the last step in making your coil is scraping all the varnish insulation off the loops. And this is best done with an X-Acto blade. Also, you may notice that my loops are not in very good alignment. Now, this doesn't affect the operation of the coil. It works just fine. But aesthetically, it would be nice if they were in a straight line. If you remember, I told you to have your form directly under the loop tool when you made your loops. And that would keep the loops more or less in a straight line. Now, apparently, I failed to do that when I wound this coil. Well, now I can make beautiful coils indoors, no matter what the weather, rain, sleet, snow, or impossible heat wave. And I'll no longer be amusing the neighbors by walking across the backyard winding up a coil of wire. You can make great coils too, but like everything worthwhile, it just takes a little practice. But before you know it, you'll be winding perfect coils every time. And if you want to preserve your hard work forever and ever, just give it a couple coats of clear varnish. But be careful not to put more varnish on the taps. Remember, you just got through scraping varnish off of the taps. Well, that's it for Crystal Radio Coils. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time.